So I wanted to make a quick little video to explain uh, some of the details that I'm using in terms of the building science principles that I'm using to um, waterproof my ICF basement walls. Actually, my ICF is going to go the full 48 feet um, uh, up, and I'm mostly building this ICF, multi-generational ICF home solo. So anyways, here's some of the things that I have learned. Um, uh, but before I get into that, I need to explain a little bit about the unique uh, situation that we are in on this property. So, this is what I'm up against. So, all of that is basically um, a river rock that has come down the canyon and has been deposited over who knows how many years. The wonderful thing about it is that the water just absolutely leaks through it like a sieve. And so, um, uh, normally you'd want to put in a French drain. I am literally sitting on a French drain, a French drain that is hundreds of feet that can so I've actually poured water on this and as fast as I can pour it it disappears so that's the reason why on the edge of the footer you will not see a French drain you didn't have to put in a French drain but what I have done is underneath the footer I actually have 15 mil pango wrap that goes completely under the footer and goes over to the other side into our basement and then I still need to put a little bit more of this um, blue rubber membrane on that outside edge. But once I um, finish putting the rest of that blue rubber membrane on, then it will be one continuous, uh, one continuous rubber membrane all the way. Actually, it's gonna go all the way, all 48 feet. And then, but the other problem that I have is you can see some of these rocks are pretty large and that's what my backfill is. So up there's my little mountain of backfill. Um, uh, in the next couple days, the excavator is going to be dumping it down into here. As those, as these large rocks come down, my concern was that if I didn't have something to protect the rubber membrane, then it would pierce my waterproof membrane, possibly damage my ICF foam, and that would not be good. However, even if that did happen, I'm not that worried. I actually live in a high mountain desert valley. We get less than 20 inches of rain a year. As you can see here, there is zero clay, no clay whatsoever. So I'm not worried about hydrostatic pressure. But nonetheless, belt and suspenders, I'm big into belt and suspenders. And so I want to do everything that I can to protect this uh, rubber blue rubber membrane that I've been rolling on. So the thing that I came up with to protect it is this utility panel. So it's a plastic utility panel. It's um, a 0.06 of an inch so it's actually pretty thick stuff and it just like it says on the on the package it says on the sticker it says tough and durable so i've done a couple of experiments where i've taken some of these larger rocks tossed them at the edge and they just bounce off and uh, um, uh, so i'm confident about that then the other thing that i've done so the rubber membrane is one defense against the water and then this poly wall utility panel is another defense against the water. And then you have two and a half inches of the ICF foam. Then you have eight inches of concrete. Concrete is kind of like a sponge, so hopefully the water never gets back in there. One of the weak points, let me wrap around here, show you one of the weak points. So one of the weak points is obviously this cold joint down here. And last night, ironically enough, it did rain, even though I live in a desert. So... Um, as you can see, the water is pooling up on that cold joint. The last thing that I want is for it to get sucked in. So I've been putting an extra thick amount. Still need to go back and touch up some areas, but an extra thick amount of the rubber membrane. And then in addition to that, I've also had some extra pango claw that I'm putting down here as well. So that should help protect against both termites and the bugs, but also help a little bit with the, with the water. And then as I connect these panels, one of the other things that I'm doing is I'm taking some of the blue rubber membrane stuff and I'm actually putting it in the seam. So see how it kind of overlaps. And then I use this tape to tape over the top. So between all those layers of protection, I'm pretty confident that we won't have any water issues. 
And the other alternative that I could have used is the um, dimple mat. So the dimple mat is about half the thickness of this stuff and it, it costs less. So just 50 cents, about 50 cents a square foot. This stuff cost me about 72 cents a square foot. So pretty confident that that I'll be able to keep what little moisture does fall in this area out of my concrete walls and keep that crawl space and basement dry. So if you have any questions, just pop them into the comment section below. And if you could do me a super huge favor, I'm actually gonna try to get up to that thousand subscribers. So if you don't mind subscribing and then you can watch this journey as I go from, that's nine feet right there, now just picture about another 40 feet higher up in the air as I build this multi-generational passive ICF home. So go ahead and like and subscribe and I'd be greatly appreciative.